my passion for farming came growing up working alongside my, uh, my father and grandfather and brother on our small family dairy. Uh, just seeing their passion that they had every day and I just fell in love with it at a very young age. Knew, it was, knew it's what I wanted to do the rest of my life. A mission statement or a motto would be basically just doing the best job that I can do to be a steward of the land and produce the best product and commodity that I can for myself and future generations. So my mornings begin uh, at 4 a.m. I wake up and have a little time with the Lord and kind of clear my head around things. And then I'll, I'll make laps around our, my feed yard and get my employees over there, a list of what has to be done and tasks that we have to achieve that day. Then I'll, I'll head over to the dairy around 5, 5.30 in the morning and call feed here and get our employees set up and our tasks of what we have to get done for that day. The biggest challenge that I've encountered is uh, basically just being a young producer in ag. The, uh, the amount of capital and money that it takes to be able to run and do your own operation is quite extensive. So the, the way that we've overcame it and currently are overcoming it is just diversifying our business, going in multiple routes and trying to create cash flow coming in from different avenues. We grew up on a small 800 cow dairy outside of Farwell, Texas. Uh, sadly, being a smaller farm and an older generation of things. In 2014, my family was actually forced to uh, sell the farm due to financial reasons. My biggest accomplishment so far has been uh, actually being able to buy back my family's uh, dairy and farm. Uh, I mean, just a sentimental value of buying back the place that you grew up on and fell in love with agriculture with. And it, it'll be able to enhance our operation by being able to increase the amount of, the amount of cattle and cropland that we have and can run through our, our program every year. My last in legacy of basically just being able to do the best job that we can do and hopefully instill the love of agriculture in either my future generation or, or another generation, just being able to keep the, the dream alive, I guess. The most innovative techniques and that we've implied into my operation is basically technology, uh, whether that's being GPS or precision agriculture, just being able to minimize our labor and costs going into everything and having data to back it all up. The goals for my operation in the future is to be more sustainable, uh, being able to grow majority of our own forages and feeds, uh, trying to keep everything in-house, uh, basically kind of cut out the middleman to increase our profits and give us a little bit more wiggle room. With, with so many advances coming into agriculture, how we basically stay up to date on everything is just in talk with other producers in the area. or Actually, the, the biggest thing that we've used is actually social media. I mean, being able to see something on Facebook or the internet and being able to look into it and see, see how this can apply to my operation. The, the biggest changes that we've seen in the last 10 to 15 years in agriculture is probably just the technology that we have at hand. I mean, grow, like on the dairy side of things, growing up, going through lists and lists of paper, and now I have everything on my smartphone, just walking. And then, I mean, it's improved us with just efficiency and time labor and time management. And any issue that I would try to improve and want to improve in ag is basically just the, the communication from producers to the consumers. I mean, there's, there's a lot of false stories out there and people truly don't know what all goes into it and practices that we have to do to create the best product and ba basically just trying to pass our story on and our information on to the consumers. What makes our operation so successful, I would say, would basically just be how we can diversify. Uh, I mean, times constantly change economically. We're all over the board month to month, week to week. So being able to diversify our operation in different avenues to help float us along or actually in the end goal, create a profit. So like diversifying, uh, being able to sell springers off. Uh, we've actually leaned more into exporting cattle into Mexico. Uh, it's actually been our primary source of income this last year. Community is very important to a farmer. I mean, we're all in it together. Um, I mean, for instance, you know, we had a pretty bad snowstorm a couple years ago, and everyone was helping each other out. You know, farmers that didn't have ag or livestock were coming to help the farmers with livestock, and we all we all just got to help each other out for the end goal. The community we have here, we've been truly blessed. Uh, we're an agricultural-based community. Everyone knows everyone, which can be a blessing and a curse at times, but. Uh, in the end game, I mean, we all get along, we all help each other out, and currently we're real involved with our local FFA and 4-H chapters, just trying to get kids involved and let the next generation hopefully fall in love with agriculture. So. How have I helped someone or succeed in the industry? Uh, basically, I mean, just through talking with my fellow, with friends that are interested in trying to get farming and 
you know, throwing ideas back and forth and kind of playing devil's advocate with one another. And I've actually learned a lot from it and I've helped them out quite a bit. And we kind of lean on each other in that area. Any advice I would give to the next generation is basically, I mean, roll with the punches. I mean, it's not easy. It, it's not been a cakewalk by any means. Uh, you just gotta keep on going and see the end goal. I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than having the crappiest day or week of your life and being able just to sit in your truck and watch the sun do to go down and see your corn coming out of the ground or hear it grow or, I mean, just, you just gotta keep on keeping on. There's gonna be a lot of down times, but there's a lot of good times. It's the most rewarding life I can think of. The Manitou te telehandler would be a huge asset to our operation. Uh, currently, I'm spread over, spread out over multiple locations, so constantly having to truck and move equipment and labor back and forth. Uh, being able to have another unit or another telehandler or machine parked at one facility would cut down on a, a lot of time and time management, and it would also allow us to do a lot of improvements on a newer facility that we just purchased. Why is it a, a great honor to be producer in the year 2022? Basically, it kind of makes everything that you're doing worthwhile. I mean, it, it's kind of a, a pat on the back, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, it makes all the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into it day to day kind of worth it. Uh, it's nice to know that other people recognize us and are proud of the job that we're doing and hope that we can keep on doing that good job. So. I'm Tanner Mesman from Farwell, Texas, and I'm a finalist for Producer of the Year 2022.